Welcome back to Windows Wednesdays. And today we want to talk briefly about a reason the latest Windows 11 24H2 may not be updating at all. And some of you might have a problem with the first mandatory security patch causing constant problems with the system not installing properly, rolling back, and then trying once again to do it. So we're going to be talking about those two issues today. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. So leave us a like and a comment down below to help boost us in the algorithm. And today we are going to be talking about the two issues we talked about. Of course, why is a Linux channel talking about Windows as I get a little bit of criticism here and there? Well, the reason is, is that a lot of the Windows shenanigans is why we switch to Linux. Now, today's issue is not really one of those. This is, I mean, this type of stuff can happen on Linux as well, where an update causes some issues in some systems, but not others. And uh, we do have one solution here that unfortunately you would need Windows to fix. I looked around other options and I didn't actually see a lot of other solutions in the Linux world. But let's go ahead and dive on in and see what we are talking about. So the first article we are going to have a look at is why your Windows system may not be updating at all. And the reason it may not be updating is issues with firmware on your SSD. There have been some misconfigurations in the SanDisk drivers which are causing the issue. And this is a case which Windows did a good job that there will be serious blue screen of death issues if you get Windows 11 on one of these uh, Western Digital SSDs. And in light of all of this, if you get Windows 11 installed, which you can do with registry hack or some other workarounds, then you will experience regular blue screens of death. And that's a problem. And so Microsoft actually did a good job here in that they uh, bl are blocking the update. Now, the fix for this is that you must update the firmware. So they have four versions of the Western Digital Drives in one SanDisk. We have the Western Digital Drives. Uh, they're all listed here, and they're all two terabyte chips. So it's something on this M2 NVMe drive uh, that is causing an issue. And uh, they have a series of model numbers. You can check this, and I'll include. Uh, I'll actually probably include the one from Western Digital here uh, down in the in the notes. So this is the firmware versions you are looking for. As long as you have this firmware version then you should be able to proceed to get the system installed. So SanDisk, who is the supplier of the chips for the Western Digital Blues, uh, gave us this information. Now, they actually first released this uh, back in December, presumably when the beta versions of the Windows uh, 11 24H2 might have been working or some other reason. But in this case here, there are blue screen of death issues. So they updated the article here uh, just this week. And so you can actually read all the details here directly from them. And so they have the model numbers listed again. And what you need to do is install the Western Digital Dashboard. They say for Windows, Mac OS is not supported. Surprisingly, Linux is not really and uh, supported on that either. So you download this, run the application, it will update the firmware on your system. Of course, I'm not a huge fan of bloatware. I'm not sure if you are either. Uh, but the question then became, can we run something like this on Linux? So over on the Western Digital Community Forums, this guy asks, a firmware upgrade utility for Linux. This guy says, I only use Linux. I'm planning to buy a Western Digital SSD. I'd like to know if there, if there is a utility that can I can use to upgrade my SSD firmware without depending on Windows-only software. So the answers here, are basically boiling down to the same thing. Now, there are a few packages people mention. This one is the NVMe CLI package. However, this person says that it has the ability to show the installed versions and update with new firmware, but it does not have anywhere to actually download them. That's actually because Western Digital does not publicly release the firmware files themselves. They have to be re released through the API inside of their application. And so that really is kind of a bummer. And over on Manjaro forums, people are asking about how you can do this. And um, 
He mentions the FWUPD software. Of course, this is a uh, firmware updater. comes with GNOME and with Ubuntu and things out of the box. And so in this case here, that doesn't impact these. Uh, they would have to use open source or publicly available firmware. So that doesn't work as well. There's not a lot of uh, other useful suggestions here except possibly using Windows to go. In fact, that's what the guys on the Linux Mint forum said. Now, the guy that's posting this, he used Windows to go and successfully booted it, but he did say it crashed the system. Now, when he says it crashed the system, I spent the day reinstalling after I screwed up UEFI booting. My guess is if he watched the video I had on uh, fixing a drive. Actually, did I release that video? I don't know if I did or not, honestly. Um, I did run into this when I went from the USB to the NVMe on the Raspberry Pi 5. I can't remember if I released the video on this or not. I don't know if I even still have the footage for it or not. I might have actually deleted it the other day. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyway, if you have a, a circumstance where the UFAI partition is messed up after a firmware system, then you can, it's probably something with the FS tabs. Uh, uh, tables and you might have to just change the block ID of the drive in the boot sectors and this might have actually uh, still worked he might have been able to just reinstall uh, Linux Mint and then port his old home drive over to the new drive and save some time I'm not sure all of the specifics I'm just uh, thinking out loud how I might approach that problem if it were handed to me other people are saying that the Windows to go is the option. So I've not seen Windows to go. I might look into this in a future video. But Windows to go is a way that you can install Windows onto a USB drive and you can effectively boot a portable version of Windows. And it looks like you install it by installing Windows 10 through a virtual machine and then you can install the Windows Go application and then you just boot the drive, uh, boot the computer off of the USB drive, kind of using the same method we talked about on our video the other day, and that will allow you to run Windows temporarily in a portable system in order to get your firmware updated. So technically, you still will need Windows, but you don't have to necessarily configure Windows to work with uh, your computer. In other words, you don't have to do a full install or a dual boot or something like that. You just need to get a system where you're running Windows and that drive can be accessed. In fact, I'm wondering if you can use the very same thing that I use on my uh, testing my distros here, where I use this PNY upgrade kit that I picked up from Walmart for like 70 bucks. And what that allows you to do is just plug in your NVMe drive into a USB drive here. And then I, I would test it to see if I can plug it into the virtual machine and get it to work that way. It might, it might not. Um, I don't know. It depends on how it sees it, what it sees it as. It might not actually see that as an M2 SSD, so that might not work. That's probably the case being that when I plug this drive in, it does show up as the brand of the USB um, uh, the USB device there, not the drive itself. So I don't think that's going to work, but certainly booting off of the Windows to go might be the issue. Just make sure you have a good backup of your system as this person it did mess up his UFI booting. Um, other people said that this is exactly what they do. It went very smooth, but slowly. And um, this guy here has an entire setup. I think this was uh, this was the original OP, and he's telling us everything that he did and things like that. And so there is another on GitHub. There is a Western Digital SSD firmware update script over here. It says it's for Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Uh, so they're installing this tool here. This is uh, WD, w, uh, FW Update. So I know nothing about this script. Um, I'm not sure if this would work necessarily or not. So it does require, you'll notice it does require the uh, NVMe CLI that we talked about earlier. The question is, is can th even this one find those non-publicly released drivers or not, uh, the firmware updates? That I don't know. And so it's... Um, it 
I'm just throwing out some possible solutions here if you're a Linux user and you're looking to try and update it. I would probably not do this without some solid confirmation that it works from a person uh, um, unless you really know what you're doing or I would probably even test it on a drive that's not quite critical because updating firmware on the device can break the device. You got to be careful about things like that. You might cause irreparable harm to one of those, uh, for example. But um, with that, there are some, at least some solutions in the works. Probably the safest is that Windows to go. Just sacrifice a USB drive to the gods of Windows and uh, get your update running and then be done with it. So there is the possibility for that. Now, the last topic we want to talk about is let's suppose you already have your Windows 11 24H2 uh, running. And uh, there is now in this week, there was released a cumulative update patch uh, for security. Security and it was marked as mandatory, and that means that Windows is going to automatically download and install it. The problem is there have been issues with this patch. So this is um, uh, this is uh, KB five zero four four two eight four, and also KB five zero four four two eight five. So these two patches are causing some issues. Not only are they causing issues getting them installed, they are also causing some issues once you get them installed. So we have to be cautious of these. So on these particular updates, uh, the uh, they are failing on uh, with four or so different errors. So uh, 284 fails on one of these four errors. There's not a lot of information about what's going on. Effectively, in some cases, it's downloading and failing to install. Other cases, it's simply failing to download. And then this guy says it's getting stuck at 40%. And uh, the other person said it's stuck between 90 and 95%. And then it shows a restall error. It rolls Windows back. And then since it's a mandatory update, it tries to do it again. <laughs> and so uh, the solution for this, since Microsoft has not yet responded to this one, at least as of the time the article is written, uh, you can manually download it. Go, going to Microsoft catalog, uh, update catalog, you can search for the patch you're looking for. And then you'll see the download link. So here's the download link for the, uh, for the patches here here and so I'm seeing this is I'm not sure why this code doesn't match the one we're talking about this is the one we're talking about here so downloading these files manually uh, it's uh, it says download first download the packages double click on the MSU files and follow the on-screen updates so this is going to allow you to download and manually update the packages which uh, everyone is saying at that point in time, things are working. So you can do that for both of these updates. Now, the problem is, is once the system updates, you might have problems with your open SSH server. Well, that's kind of important for many people. And so it, nobody really knows what's going on. There's no error logs or anything. However, if you delete or rename the program data SSH logs directory, then the system will start itself normally again. So whatever case that is, um, just go ahead and uh, delete or um, move those logs, the existing logs, somewhere else. So presumably it's something involved in maybe, uh, I, would, I would say, permissions on logs if this were Linux. But it's not Linux. Everything's got permissions. You know? uh, so um, something misconfigured with this particular data directory is causing the issue with the SSHD service. So you can go ahead and get that guy running in that instance there. So there are a couple of little issues there inside of Windows. Of course, one of these is not Windows. They actually did a great job mitigating the disaster. You just need to upgrade your firmware. Uh, of course, if you're using Windows, go ahead and just use that uh, utility from Western Digital or SanDisk, whoever's the one creating it, to get your firmware updated. If you're on Linux and you feel the need to update the drive, some cases you might need to, there are some options out there. I would probably guess the safest is that Windows to go, but there's some other ones you can play around with, especially if you have a few of these drives fl floating around and you don't really mind if one of them gets bricked for the purpose of education. <laughs> so uh, those are the options down there below. Anyway, uh, with that, thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see more content like this, leave us a like and a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoy, well, I don't know, maybe getting your windows upgraded. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. Interesting video. We'll talk to you guys later.